how I say it, this question is fairly friendly actually. It's just setting up the equations that we're then going to use. So we've told that the number of cats before the escape was C, the number of dogs before the escape was D, and we need to write an equation linking C and D. Well, this is going to use this 60. So on one day, 60 of the animals managed to escape. And once a volunteer had realized, they counted the remaining animals and they noted that half of the cats and a third of the dogs had escaped. So we can write down that, well, the total number of cats that escaped is a half times C, where C was the original number. And then the total number of dogs that escaped is going to be one third times D. And therefore, the total number of animals that escaped is going to be these two added together. And that is going to equal 60. So I'm just going to leave it with fractions in at the moment. We could we could multiply through by 6, but it just asks for an equation. Part 2 is actually then even more simple. If the total number of animals before the escape was t, write down the equation linking c, d, and t. Well, it's just going to be the total number of animals is the number of cats before the escape plus the number of dogs before the escape. So we set things up well here. All right, let's take a look at part B. So given that more cats than dogs escaped, find the largest possible value of T. Well, we have, so the number of cats that escaped was a half C. C was the original number of cats. And so that's got to be greater than one third D. I'm just gonna write that information down mathematically. And now we wanna find the maximum value of T. Well, I have two equations here, and yes, there's three unknowns, but I do have, I have a relationship between C and D. So I'm going to replace one of them, either C by, you know, by sub making C the subject here, or D. Okay, let's, let's make D the subject. So it's going to be that one third D is equal to 60 minus a half C. And therefore D, if I times through by 3, is 180 minus 3 over 2C. And now I can basically replace this by this, because they're both equal to D. So T is equal to C plus 180 minus 3 over 2C, which is 180 minus a half C. All right, and so we're now trying to maximize T, remember. And so we kind of want to make C as small as possible, but we've got this condition. So we're going to be using both of these. It can't actually be 180 because that will be when you have zero cats and you have to have either half the number of cats is greater than a third of the number of dogs because that was, remember, that these were the numbers of each that escaped. I've made um, D the subject. I just want to quickly talk about the fact that I could have made C the subject. I could have said instead, that a half C is equal to 6D minus one third D. And therefore C is going to be 120 minus two thirds D. And then T is going to equal 120 minus two thirds D plus D, which is 120 plus one third D. So this is just a little aside, an alternative route to solving this question. So here, I want to minimize C. What's over here, I want to maximize D. It's all going to come down to this condition now. A half C is greater than one third D. So that means, right, bringing this back in, I, I didn't want to deal with it straight away. I wanted to get some, you know, this information down. But that means that C is greater than two thirds D, um, or three C is greater than two D. Now let's just bring back in this condition, a half C plus one third D is equal to 60. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't talk about this, did I, actually? Because I can use this also to get a condition for C. 
So this is actually not going to help, I've realized. Because a half C is greater than one third D, then it must be that a half C is greater than 30. Okay, because more than, um, we are told that more cats and dogs escaped. This is the proportion of cats that escaped. This is the proportion of dogs that escaped. Got to be that more than half of them would, would, was this a half C. And therefore C is going to be greater than 60. Um, in fact, we need to do a little bit more than that because I can't just say that C was greater or equal to 61 because actually I need to be able to have it. So get rid of that. Actually, a half C is therefore going to be greater or equal to 31 and C is going to be greater or equal to 62. Right, now we're nearly there actually. So the minimum of C is going to be 62. And therefore, the maximum of T is going to be 180 minus this 31, in fact, okay, this half of 62, which gives 149. So, cannot make any bigger. I'm just writing that because it does say in the question, uh, you must justify why the value found is the largest. So I feel like I have because I've explained, you know, C has to be greater or equal to 62. Therefore, the minimum is 62 and that will give us the maximum. Let's just look at if we had gone the other route, maximizing D. Well, in that case, so actually, let me write it over here. Then I would get the, in fact, one third D must be less than 30, and therefore one third d must be less than or equal to 29. So d must be less than or equal to 87. And now I want to maximize d, so t would equal 120 plus one third of 87, which is 29 which again gives me 149. So I can get that, that route as well. This is the way to do it really. Like I actually, when I originally did this question, I, I kind of did this amalgamation where I was um, using C and D. I realized, I did realize that I had to maximize D and minimize C, but I didn't get a formula like this. Whereas it's like clear when you have this formula that, you know, you because you just got it in terms of C, using the like combining these two, it's just clear that actually to maximize, you're gonna have to minimize C. So this is the way to go. You could have gone the green route instead. That's why I've talked about it. But at the end of it, 149 is the answer, the maximum of T, and we've got to be able to justify which I feel like I've, I've done enough.